Hi, this is Mike and I'm with Dave, still uh, in Eleuthera. We thought we'd talk about the markets a little bit. Um, it, you know, a lot of stuff going on now, I think we can look at our experience the past uh, year with the European markets to understand how to navigate a market like what's happening in gold because we bought last year in July into Europe. I bought Greece and different stocks over there, a lot of these ETFs. And this week, a lot of them are up big. Uh, the Bank of Ireland was up 8% the other day. Italy, Spain, a lot of these things are just breaking out. But I bought them a year ago when they're at really cheap valuations of, and have been patient. Now it's paying off. And I think there's lessons in that that people need to apply when it comes to the gold mining stocks yeah, too. Yeah. yeah, I think um, when it comes to the gold and the gold stocks right now, or the, the European stuff, is that you have to ignore the bad news. I actually remember when I got bullish in Europe last summer, one of the, the biggest uh, questions I got, or responses negatively were, the fundamentals are terrible, where's the growth gonna come from? And I think historical analysis is the most important thing to go on. Like one reason I bought HL Toy, this was the biggest Greek uh, telecom company, um, uh, which went under a dollar at that time from a high of $16, because I looked at Argentina Telecom during their debt crisis. And Argentina Telecom did the same thing, went from over $30 to 50 cents. And and the rebound, Argentina Telecom went to, uh, TO is the ticker, that Telecom to Argentina, um, went to $25, plus dividends and all that sort of thing. So I was like, well, this is a similar thing. This is the biggest telecom company. People are gonna use their cell phones. Actually, I think 30% of their business is in Bel Bulgaria, so it's outside of Greece as well. And Bulgaria is still growing. So I was like, this is this is a great opportunity. And of course, there'd be worries about them being able to refinance debt, especially with government interest rates to 30% at that time in Greece. But then I also looked at that Deutsche Telekom had a big interest in, in HL Toy. So I figured, well, at the very worst, Deutsche Telekom is gonna give them a cash injection or take them over or something, right? So that stock went from as low as 70 cents and we bought in the mid $1 range, like 150 range, 140 range. And that stock is over $4 now. And 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 um, I, that's just a, the total maximum pessimism trade. If you think these companies are gonna survive and they've been beaten up, you buy them and just as in terms of Greece right now, I, I we have a couple of trades right now we both have on, and we're not. I'll, I won't mention in what, but in the Greece stock market, companies that haven't rallied, really rallied yet, but I think they will go for, going forward. Well, the thing too is when we were buying these things in Europe last year, people were telling us we were crazy because on the news on TV they're talking about the debt and they're all going bankrupt and. And that was essentially the bottoms for these markets. And ever since then, people have still been pretty skeptical and, and too scared and so forth. And even with all that, it's going up and up and up. And the same thing seems to be the gold stocks for most people, you know, because they've fallen for two years now and, and they seem to have bottomed the other month and be going up. But despite that bottom, people are still scared to death of the gold stocks. It's like sentiment is overly bearish and yeah, like, it's crazy. When I talk to people about buying the gold stocks here, and see, and it's difficult because I'm someone who's a long-term bull on gold and was willing to wait out a 50, 60% decline because I've already done it in 2008 and I still, I know that what happened in the 70s that there were these numerous 50, 60% declines in the stocks and they still ended up going up thousands of percent. And so that people kind of think, oh, you're just a perma bull or something. And they, but I just know from talking to people right now, people just look at me and all they say is, well, if gold goes to 900, 1,000, these companies are all finished. And that's, well, if the companies are all finished, there'll be no gold production in the world. And, and what's gonna happen to the price after that, right? So, but what I'm saying is people just talking like that, even though gold has dropped, 30%, even though the stocks have dropped as much as, in some cases, 70 or 80%, GDXJ dropped almost 80%. What happens is everybody is just bearish and everybody's just looking for further declines. And that's what usually happens at a bottom. Like if you look at the 2002 NASDAQ bottom, when the NASDAQ fell 80%, everyone was saying that it was gonna fall 90% because that's what the Dow did in 29. So that's usually your bottom, when people, despite big losses, are still looking to further losses. Like how many people outside of myself and you were telling people to buy Greece last year, yeah. even though the Greece market was down 95%. So I really think that this is giving people an excellent opportunity 
to buy in cheap if you missed the entire gold bull market today. You know, gold itself is still up quite a bit. You know, it's up from $250 to north of $1,300. But on this decline in the stocks, you're getting to buy many of these stocks very cheap and probably the last time before the bubble blow off, you'll, you'll get to buy them cheap. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And, and if the key, I think, for the average person, what they really need to do is just not be scared and get over whatever fears they have over the market. And I know people on TV are really negative, but that's when you want to be investing. People were negative in 2009 on television about the uh, S&P 500, and it's gone up for four years. They're negative now on gold. Uh, you know, you hardly ever see anyone bullish on CNBC. So now's the time to take you know, small investments if that makes you feel comfortable and just start doing stuff. Yeah, I should notice that. that one thing that happens too is after one market moves in, in one direction for a few years, like for example, everyone now is saying when the Dow broke out to new highs and the, and the S&P broke out to new all-time highs, well, this is just the start of a bull market. Well, right. it starts, it's been going up for four years and it's more than double from its lows. How is just this the start? And same thing with gold, that when gold broke down, so this is just the start of a gold bear market. Gold's been going down for two years, and I've done this historical study on it, which we talked about in our last video. Markets usually don't drop for more than two to three years at a time. Even if you're in a secular bear move, there's usually a good counter trend rally, right? And even if you don't believe in gold, the gold stocks are probably going to have a hundred percent rally here from the bottom, which would still be a good move from where we're talking to. Where and that's a been. rally that would yeah. last from now until the end of the year. Yeah, or probably even last for a year. Probably last about this time next year yeah. or to the spring of next year. Well, I think it'll go for several years. Yeah, several years. So, you know, like after 1982, gold rallied into 84. And then it bonded again in 85 and rallied to 87. So there's these multi-year moves, even secular bear markets. But I still think it's a secular bull market. But that's what I'm saying. It drops for two years. The stocks fall by two-thirds and everyone says, oh, we're just starting a multi-year decline. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, it's ludicrous, it's stupid, right? So that, that's what you kind of have to look at here is buying these stocks right now when they're cheap, ignoring your bias and ignoring all that negative news and ignoring all the big write downs from the gold companies, ignoring that they're horribly run. So I just think now is an excellent, excellent time. Look at, in the last few years, I've made a shift in my kind of a, uh, opinion on investing and right now, all I really do is buy maximum pessimism. I buy cheap, undervalued stocks. And that's why last year I was buying Europe. This year, I think the gold equities are what's in that. When you're seeing, I know they had big write-offs. So let's say the write-offs away. Just the actual operating income of these companies, when they're trading at 9, 10, 11 times earnings, at a $1,300 gold price or $1,400 gold price, which is pretty low, um, that just tells you how cheap these companies are. are. No, now it's, that's why this is the time, and hopefully people will listen and, and participate and uh, have a good time with us. Okay.